Hey guys, happy 2017. Uh, this is my first review. Obviously, I'm still recovering from the surgery and it's been, I haven't gone to see a movie yet, but I did get a movie uh, for Christmas that I was very excited to see. And now that I've watched it, I'm kind of on the fence of whether I'm happy with it or not. The movie we're gonna talk about is the black and chrome edition of Mad Max Fury Road. Now, a lot of people were quite excited for this version. I was one of them because when in post-production of the film, George Miller kept on saying that he really wanted to see, he had a black and white version of this film with very minimalist dialogue and more so music and sound effects. And that was it. Like he was really adamant about it. Obviously he didn't get that. They went with this version, the version that we got in theaters, which was still really kick-ass. But we were all very interested in it. And in fact, there was a guy who was on Vimeo who actually put up a version of the film that he edited himself. However, obviously Warner Brothers took that down. So because they said, well, we're gonna do the Black and Chrome edition. And everyone was really excited for it, and me included. 15 minutes in, I realized that they literally did nothing else to this movie except change the color contrast. Like, literally, that's it. Like, it's a nice black and white, but that's it. We literally could have been watching the original version, fucked with the contrast on the TV, and we would have gotten the same result, albeit maybe a little odd. But that's the first thing that's kind of, it's, it's niggling me a little bit. Mainly because I was really expecting a different version of the film, and literally all we have is a version that had a color contrast. However, when we think about it, there are different versions of media that have been changed to black and white that we still like, even though they are exactly the same thing. One of the examples I'm going to use here is Batman Noir. This is one of my favorite graphic novels, and oddly enough, it is literally just issues 620 to 625, done in black and white. Now, why do I like it? Because, well, for one, I never read those issues before, before I read this. And two, they did upgrade a little bit of the coloring, mainly the sort of the outlines of characters, they did alter them a little bit for the black and white version of it. And honestly, I think there are maybe some tweaks here and there through Mad Max Fury Road Black and Chrome Edition. There are certain aspects of the film that do look different, albeit a lot different, for instance, the beginning of the movie where Morton Joe is giving the people water, the world just looks shittier. <laughs> like, it already looked pretty bad, right? But because of the high color contrast, the blue and the hue yellow, um, the orange, it kind of gives us a little comfort feeling. Remember, those are two colors that people find most alluring. Without those colors, the world looks way crappier than it did before. Oddly enough, too, it also reminds me of Schindler's List feel awful for that, but a lot of the movie I'm seeing when people are talking, I'm thinking of Schindler's List. The action scenes, however, are very different in terms of how you visually see them. With the light, it's definitely a color contrast. There's a much bleaker. It's kind of like watching an old stagecoach movie or well, an old black and white monster film. It also reminds me of the Van Helsing scene, the very beginning of the movie that wasn't done in black and white. So it's almost a homage to the old horror films because it just takes out the color, it takes out the life, it's very brutal. There's a lot less to the world, but at the same time we have a lot, we have a different perspective of it. And all we did was just change the color. Now while I'm definitely saying that if you already have the movie, there's almost no point in buying this version. If you're a super fan like me, I'm happy to have it on my wall. Will I always say, let's watch the black and chrome edition over the regular version? Probably not. This is more of an experimental thing. George Miller at the very beginning says this is the version that he prefers to watch, which, good for him, but we were all expecting something a little bit more because of what he talked about in the post-production interviews and everything. So I'll still say that Black and Chrome Edition is something that you could watch. I'm not going to rate this out of 7 because literally I've already rated the movie a 7 out of 7. But in terms of this product, I don't know. I would say it's... I think that... If you were a super fan, you you would like it, but I don't know if you're gonna watch it every time. That's just my opinion. I still think that it's not worth full price because you are literally just playing for a color contrast version. If you are good enough with a computer and you have a downloaded version of this, you can literally just fudge around with the settings and 
VLC and get the exact same result, but that's just me. Anyway guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. I will be doing more reviews hopefully soon as I will be able to sit down again for a longer period of time without slouching. Quite soon, hopefully. Anyway guys, that's all for me. See you later.